What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to talk about a few different topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Scream 6. We'll be talking about Megan. We'll be talking about Wednesday. And we'll be rounding it out by talking about a small update on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So, Scream 6, just to kick it off with that, the trailer for Scream 6, I'll say, seems to be very imminent based on a few things. One, the engagement on social media is picking up. Two, we just got today like a motion clip of the poster, you know, the poster that we got, the official poster where we see Ghostface behind the subway taunting someone or stalking someone, I'll say would be a better term. And then one of you actually, shout out to you, JT, were able to get a reaction response on Instagram when the official account was DM saying that the next stop would be a final trailer. The Scream account liked the message in response, which is pretty cool and to me is another sign that we are very near to getting this trailer. But the biggest thing I want to briefly address in this update is Vera Renan, who has chimed in to say Kirby's presence in Scream 6 might be similar to Courtney's screen time in 5 or a little bit more even. So with that in mind, expect Kirby to be involved in a big way, similar to how Gail was involved in a big way for Scream 5 despite her limited presence. Kirby's return is going to be fine. Her limited screen time won't even be noticed because no one is going to be counting like that first leap. <laughs> and secondly, her usage is quite good when it pertains to the story. So what I want to also address is that consider that Courtney thing. Courtney, while many people probably would look at the screen time and say, yeah, she had a limited presence. No one's going to really knock the presence because they used her quite well. She showed up in Woodsboro. She ended up sticking around because she was teaming up with Sydney to get justice for Dewey. Wanted to put an end to this once and for all. So they made use of that. The limited screen time isn't what you need to be concerned about. It's really coming down to the context of it all. How was she used? Because if you're going to have a Lindsay Wallace scenario where you can show up as much as you want to, but what are you contributing to the overall story? Or are you just here? It's not going to be like that with Kirby. So I want to jump into this next topic here, talking about James Wan's, not James Wan's, but just talking about Megan. James Wan seems to have admitted that Megan's practical effects are due to the low budget nature more than anything when it comes to that movie. When speaking with Daily Dead, he said at the end of the day, this was a pretty low budget film in that respect. So it's not a film with lots of money behind it to be able to pull Megan off. What we had to do was be smart about everything and be creative with how we approached the character. And without spoiling it, we employed all kinds of methods and all kinds of techniques. One of the very things early on, Gerard and I were adamant in wanting to keep it as practical as possible. I'm a big fan of practical effects and Gerard is really into that as well. So it made that easier. We used whatever tools we needed so that we could bring her to life. I'm glad we got to see these practical effects to be honest because a lot of folks like myself miss that in film and Mega got brownie brownie points for me right away for that alone I'm, so i'm glad we got those practical effects i don't think that when it comes to certain projects that you should try to stray away from practical effects you should try to embrace practical effects because i'm glad we're seeing some of that returning like the animatronics we saw in the tv series chucky with the first and second season i'm enjoying seeing that i'm pretty sure a lot of that was brought on by i recall because this movie came out when i was in high school i recall just a lot of negative backlash to the cgi that was used in curse of chucky because even i when i saw that i think it's the i think it's the one where he's standing at the top of the staircase where that was just something that not only me but many people were like you gotta stop doing this do not do this bring back the practical effects use the animatronics bring in um real actors who can just be dressed up in chucky clothing if you need to have chucky running around do not rely on cgi so when it comes to megan i'm glad we got practical effects now the headlines could be twisting it to say that the only reason we had practical effects was because of the low budget so if we would have gotten a cgi fest it probably could have been detrimental to the overall film and the overall reception definitely because people just love practical effects i feel like a vast majority of your of your uh, audience would prefer that you can actually manage to keep the realism intact as much as possible just to jump into wednesday wednesday season two has been announced by netflix um this is coming from the showrunner she said it's been incredible to create a show that has connected with people across the world said showrunners alfred alfred go and miles miller in a statement uh, thrilled to continue Wednesday's Wednesday's Fortress journey into season two. We can't wait to dive headfirst into another season and explore the kooky, spooky world of Nevermore. Just need to make sure Wednesday hasn't emptied the pool first. I enjoyed the hell out of Wednesday, and Jenna Ortega's star power has only grown since the show released because her IG following went up. The show has been trending thanks to the iconic iconic dance number. I'm seeing so many people recreate over on uh, 
things like TikTok, Instagram. Those, of course, could just be being reshared from TikTok and so much more. I can't wait to see what Eden and characters like Bianca get to do in the next season. My only thing is I hope they can somehow make it a little darker because I know that was a gripe for some people. I didn't mind it, but I would like to see a more darker darker approach in season two because the show did have some dark moments but i know a lot of people just might have thought it was too lighthearted at times but again i saw no issue with it um uh, just to round out this video now that we're done speaking about wednesday well firstly if you're excited about wednesday season two let me know down in the comment section below what would you like to see in the second season uh, and do you think jenna ortega will have any scheduling conflicts going into scream seven which i'm sure we'll get that i'm sure they'll work that out but if you think there'll be scheduling conflicts let me know why or why not down in the comment section below but just to finish off this video by talking about buffy sarah michelle geller recently had a interview with sfx magazine and she shared her thoughts on a buffy revival and how she sees herself factoring into it and she basically is reiterating what she's been saying she, i don't really think she wants to be reviving that character or be back in the shoes of that character i'm not saying she would never return but as it stands right now you know with nothing being thrown at her aka money and other things she's content with where they left the show she said i'm very proud of the show that we created and it doesn't need to be done Geller said about returning to the character. She said, we wrapped it up. I am all for them continuing the story because the story of female empowerment. I love the way the show was left. Every girl who has the power can have the power. It sets up perfectly for someone else to have the power. She's exactly right. They don't need to retell, retell or even revive Buffy's story. If they revive Buffy's story, that would be great to see if Sarah Michelle Geller is down to do it. However, that's not what we need. There is something that was done in that finale that has paved the way for a world of stories that can be explored with so many different slayers, etc. But we're not getting that. We haven't gotten anything since 2003. Hell, I'll say we haven't gotten anything from that universe since Angel ended in 2004. What I would love to see eventually uh, that bridges into something, maybe we get a show called Slayers, where each season you have slayers focused on in the universe. Uh, 10 episodes 12 episodes each season different slayers some could die some survive by the time we get to the final season of slayers those surviving slayers come together for the last season with this new slayer and they can bridge that into a show centered on all these ladies i would love to see something like that if they were somehow able to come up with a show where each season focused on a different slayer but it bridges into an even bigger show plan let me know what you guys think about that down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.